Um, if there's any mothers in the house this morning or motherly like figures, did anyone get a really cool torch like me? So good. I got this torch. I was really toying up. Should I get the lip balm or the torch? How's good options, ladies? <laughs> Bit of options. <laughs> I went the torch because I've got an impending thing happening and I thought this could be good in the night, perhaps. Anyway, there are spares. If you are going to a Mother's Day lunch or you, your neighbour you know is might be, a, be by herself today, wouldn't it be wonderful if you went and said Happy Mother's Day and gave her a torch? <laughs> I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Oh, golly. <laughs> so funny. Hey, um, this morning we get to hear from a wonderful selection of people, but um, I just wanted to share really organically and authentically with you this morning, if that's okay with you. And I'm a little bit breathless. I'm um, Yeah, Carol's saying, take it easy. I've got three weeks until this baby Scott number two is arriving, but um, I've sat in those same chairs um, I've listened to multiple Mother's Day talks. I've even spoken at some. I've sat in those same chairs as a teenager who really, in reality, didn't fully appreciate or understand the magnitude of motherhood or womanhood even. I've sat in those same chairs as my future mother-in-law tragically died. I've sat in those same chairs as a hurting 20-year-old who unexpectedly lost her own mother and felt robbed. I felt confused. I've sat in those same chairs as a wife who longed and waited to be a mum and felt like my body was failing me as a woman. And I cried in silence because all I wanted and craved was to be a mum. I sat in those same chairs as I became a mum without a mum, but was blessed by an abundance of the most generous group of people, of women mostly, who still care and nurture me and count me as their own. I've sat in those same chairs as a lonely mum. I've sat in those same chairs as a grieving mum. I've sat in those same chairs as a joy-filled mum, as a passionate mum, as a calloused mum as a woman who lost herself, as a woman who then found herself, as a woman who miracus miraculously could conceive, a woman who still is figuring it out and a woman who needs all the help she can get. <laughs> Motherhood and being a woman is really hard. Motherhood and being a woman is really rewarding. Motherhood and being a woman is life in technicolour. Motherhood and being a woman can mean your life sometimes goes to the background. Motherhood and being a woman is the most miraculous, wondrous adventure. And God designed us uniquely, intricately, purposefully. Women, those who mother by nature or by spirit, or sometimes have the privilege to, to do both. We're phenomenal. You are phenomenal in every sense of the word. And today I acknowledge completely, because I get it, how hard Mother's Day can be. But I also think Mother's Day is wonderful. Last week we talked about the importance of fatherhood. And this morning it seems fitting that we talk about the importance of motherhood as well. And so it's such an honour to sit beside three phenomenal women this morning and dive into the nitty gritty of not only motherhood but womanhood too. The highs and lows, the raw and real and beautiful moments they've experienced as women and as mums. And so will you welcome me? In fact, if you're able, can you stand with me and welcome Gabby, Jenny and Elise to the stage. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks everyone. Um, in preparation for this morning's service, I, 
I truly sought God as to what voices um, he was leading me to invite in, onto the stage or Jeff and Carolyn. And um, I felt really prompted to ask these three incre- incredible women, women who have done it tough, women who have um, run the race with endurance and not given up, and uh, women who don't necessarily love a microphone. And yet here we are. (laughs) Even this morning over crepes, they were like, oh, are you sure? (laughs) Um, So thank you in advance. (laughs) And I'm sorry you have to sit next to me. (laughs) Um, We're going to ask them, um, but I'm also not sorry. Sorry, not sorry, everyone. Um, I'm going to ask some really raw questions this morning, but also questions that potentially, um, as a body of people, we haven't heard from a Mother's Day panel at church before. Um, Only because I think that's where we're leaning, hey? We're leaning as a community and as a society as, tell us the real stuff. Tell us the raw stuff. That's why I loved Jeff's message last week, because I was like, yeah, get it, Jeff, get it. Tell us the real stuff. You should tell us how you feel all the time. Maybe maybe not all the time. <laughs> hey, I'm going to turn this microphone on and we're going to get into it. Are you ready to hear from them? Perfect. You don't have to necessarily start with you, Jenny. I'm just passing you the microphone. <laughs> um, so this morning I wanted to start with maybe one of the easier questions. <laughs> and it is, what is, what does motherhood mean to you? And has that perspective potentially changed over the years? Um, I've been around children since a very young age. I was an auntie at eight and I was a nanny of small babies overseas for some time. So I knew that motherhood was a lot of hard physical work. But I guess I didn't realise until I became a mum that motherhood was so all-encompassing that it would just occupy every thought from the minute your baby is born. And motherhood has brought me some of the greatest joy of my life. Mm. It's also brought me some of the biggest challenges of my life and has tested my faith. But you just never switch off from being a mum. And I guess that's something I didn't realise before I became a mum. Mm. Absolutely. Gabby, what about you? Well, my experience was quite somewhat different. Um, My parents were migrants. Um, My mother lived through a World War II in a prison camp in Indonesia. So when I grew up as a third child of my mum and dad, um, it was extremely difficult. I would always challenge her and i say, are you telling me the truth? And then when I was older, in primary school, I wouldn't talk to her um, just because of who she was. And um, that went on my whole life. Um, I left home at 16. I went to Sydney when I was most probably 17. Um, A lot of damaged emotions. I really hated my mother and my parents. Um, But God was always there and um, I did believe in God, but then I went away from him. I dealt with a lot of, um, I went nursing, but I uh, worked in a war vet's hospital, so it was a lot to do with older people and sickness and illness and tragedy. And then, tragedy hit our family. I lost my dad, my brother and my little nephew all in a space of about 18 months in my early to mid 20s. And um, before my father passed, my parents um, rejected me again. And um, because I went home one, one year when I was 19 and, you know, I told my dad how I was feeling and he said no go back to Sydney see ya so emotionally they had died for me like when you get divorced but it was both of them 
So that was really difficult. So I went through further grief for many, many years. Mm. Then I got married the first time and my husband wasn't faithful, so that didn't work um, and other things. And then when I was 36, I met my husband, Graham. Mm. So that was a blessing, yes. <laughs> and then Claire came along yeah. about a year later. <laughs> But I'd never, never in my entire life had anything to do with children because in my nursing I dealt with elderly people, HIV groups, support groups. I worked in palliative care. So I worked with death and dying. And I was also, as a child, I never wanted to live. I always said, God, take me to heaven. Wow. I don't want this. Wow. And so that was my life, one of... Um, a lot of tragedy, a lot of sadness. But Claire came and I thought, what do I do with this? <laughs> what do I do with this? You know, so alien, you know, so different. Anyhow, so life then grew from there and things changed a lot. It was very difficult. We we're in a country town and but the church there were extremely supportive mm. and so they maybe were more parents than I was a parent um, just because I had no idea and I had no aunts, I had no uncles around me at that time or anyone. And then eight years later, Jacob came along. I had a few miscarriages in between and then Jacob came when I was 46 but then we had a much better idea of what <laughs> parenthood was. That's hopeful for me. Yes. Yeah, great. Yes, Thank yes. You. And so that then brought a lot more joy to our life again. Um, yeah, so there are tribulations, there are ups, there are downs. Mm. But God in his mercy was very faithful and always lifting me up wow. and our family and things have changed. And one other thing is when my mother, the last 20 years of her life, maybe 15, she got dementia and she became a very nice person. <laughs> so then we could go and visit her in the nursing home because she was there for 12 years and we could love up on her and Aww. I was one of six kids. So it did this flip around, like this is one example of who she was. Um, my son Jacob was four years old and he was boisterous and noisy and we were in the <laughs> nursing home and mum was in a wheelie walker and she says, well, what if I run him flat and then we can hang him up like a painting on the wall? <laughs> and this is the kind of person she was. So that's just... Appreciating good art, Jacob, that's what it yes. is. Yes. So maybe that might give you a bit of insight. <laughs> so, yeah, it is... And it's, the church is my family mm. and I do really appreciate everybody's love and care mm. and truth telling mm. and whatever is said. Wow, yeah. thank you Gabby. Thank you. Certainly a mixture of perspectives there. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. you? Uh, I came, became a mum very young, I was 19 and I thought I would be great at it. I'd cared for all my little cousins and I thought I'm going to be like motherhood's easy. I know how to care for babies. This is <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, but got hit with postnatal depression mm. pretty soon after having Charlie and thought, thinking oh man what, <laughs> what mm. the heck mm. I don't know how to do this. Uh, but over the years um, motherhood to me has become this goal of teaching the kids about Jesus and God and helping them develop a really deep and lasting relationship with him mm. um, and I have to lead by example or it's not going to mean anything so that's what it means yeah. to me wow. um, you know I want them to become good citizens in society and citizens of God's kingdom so that's what motherhood has become for me just I don't know try my best to yeah. to like teach them all of that and yeah. So good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, beautifully said. Um, I feel like my I have changed so much. Um, Nora's only two and a half, but I feel like I've changed so much in terms of my emotions, my spirituality, 
my um, mental walk, my obviously my physical body has changed. Tell me I'm not alone, please. <laughs> have you changed? How have you changed? <laughs> How do we overcome the change? <laughs> Do you want to go? <laughs> I think we change in every way. Yeah. Um, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. I've definitely become stronger in mm. pretty much every aspect of my life. Um, particularly spiritually, mm. because I think becoming a mum made me realise I have to, I have to make this real for myself, my faith. Yeah. I can't just um, live a life of faith that I've been told to, what to do and what how to live it. Um, it has to be mine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, every aspect. You know, you go through so many different emotions and challenges mm. as a mum, and yeah, I have definitely become stronger. Mm. Yes, I've changed greatly too. Um, you never stop worrying about your kids or giving them up to God, and we're not perfect. They're not perfect, but with God's grace all things are possible mm. and so motherhood has become an extension of me and changed me 180 degrees and I thank God every day I'm alive regardless of how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking that I have a hope and I have a future and that my children do mm. and they are such a blessing and it, it's God's goodness to me mm. and my husband. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I um, I have changed in every way as well. Obviously, physically, because you're never quite the same once you've had never, a baby. Never. <laughs> and I've had three, so um, yeah, I remember leaving hospital with our first little baby and thinking, what on earth do we do now? Like, we've got <laughs> no idea. This little human is reliant on us, and they don't come with an instruction book. <laughs> And yeah, it's just a huge responsibility and um, a little piece of you is running around in them. So you just, you never stop thinking about them. Mm. And spiritually I've changed because I've had to rely on God more as a mum than in other, any other area of my life. Mm. Yeah. I think there's something to be said about the mental load of women generally and then the mental, ho mental load of motherhood as well. It's quite taxing. It can be quite taxing. Um, I think I found that the hardest part of, I mean, even this morning, I was saying to Matt, have you thought about this, this, and this, and this? And he's like, I've got the day. I'm like, do you have the day? Do you have the day? But it's the, it's the mental load of, you have the day, darling. You're fine. But yeah, <laughs> give us some validation. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's quite, it's a, it's a stretching um, role, isn't it? And I think that I love that wording that you use, Gabby, about the extension, motherhood being an extension of who you are. It's so true, so true. Is that you've all talked about your spiritual walk changing or potentially going deeper um, when you become a mum. Is there a verse that comes to mind that kind of embodies how you view motherhood or how you aspire to be in your motherhood journey? Do you want to start, Jen? For me, the, it is Psalm 139, verse 13. You knit me together in my mother's womb, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I don't remember when I first heard that verse, but it was a long time ago. And it was when I had the realisation that God knew everything about me, my good points and my not-so-good points, my fears, anxieties, hopes, dreams... Mm. And I realised that he also knew that about my children, mm. all their joy and their pain and their hopes and their dreams. And if he loves me that much, and I know he does, then he also loves them with that same love. Yeah. And long after I've left the planet and they're still here, he will still be watching over them because mm. from the minute of conception, they also are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And that's a great comfort to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's beautiful. Mm. Mm. Well, I've got two. <laughs> One is from Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And Shrek, when he came out of that castle with Donkey and um, the princess, um, Donkey was having a conversation with Shrek. And Shrek was getting really annoyed. And Shrek says, I'm just like an onion, okay? I come off. <laughs> One peel at a time. 
And that's so often with our attitudes, our thoughts and our sin life. And I'm thinking, God just deals with us with one attitude at a time. Mm. One sin, that's one so thought. And, and, and so I'm thinking, oh, I'm so like Shrek in some <laughs> ways. But um, talking about a scripture, finally, <laughs> 1 Peter 2... You can two, talk about Shrek all you like. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 1 Peter 2, chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, mm. be compassionate uh, and humble. So... That's what I'm hoping to achieve more every day. Yeah. To more, be more like Jesus mm. and Shrek. And Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the verse that's really spoken to me over the years is from Matthew 6, verse 34. Um, from the message version, it says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Um, naturally, I worry about things. I can worry about the kids and everything in life um, and think too far ahead mm. into the future and worry about that, even though I can't really change it. So this has helped me really focus on today. Mm. Um, yes, I still plan for the future and make plans for the kids but it makes me live in the moment and it takes away that worry of the future mm. got, knowing that like there's enough grace for me to get through today and to do the best I can today and then tomorrow it'll come again yeah. and the next day um, it really helps yeah it just helps me have more faith and be a little bit more calm <laughs> And yeah, I totally resonate <laughs> resonate with that. My one of my favorite verses is from Luke 12, also from the Passion or Message version, and it talks about thinking about the lilies and how much God cares for the lilies, and if He has so much attention to detail about how they become beautiful, even just the creation. Imagine what He thinks about us and how He plans for us, because mm, control freak over here, Georgia really wants to know everything but all I have to do is just think about the lilies and it helped really soothes me in my motherhood that everything's going to be okay because if he's out there working with them of course he's working behind the scenes for us so great. yeah I've realized that everything is really out of my control oh, it's big time <laughs> when things go bad you think man okay I can't control this <laughs> yes. I really need God yeah it's so true yeah. hey um Jenny when I think of you I think of and I reckon if you've known Jenny for at least half an hour, you'd probably resonate with these same qualities. I see grace. I see patience. I see a steadfast woman that is constantly strong and constantly bold. You haven't had to have... You haven't had the easiest journey before um, and set before you, particularly the last couple of years... Um, and so I wanted to honour you with those qualities as well because you truly are um, the epitome of those things, gracious, patient, steadfast. Would you agree if you've known her for more than half an hour? Um, and so I just wanted to, I want those qualities, I want to glean from you. How have you, have you always had those qualities or how do you work on them? Anyone else want those qualities too? Mum, I've had to be patient over the years. Waiting for answers to prayer is not easy. Mm. And I've sometimes impatiently waited patient, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I've waited, yeah. I've, I've prayed and I've asked God for answers to prayers. And I've seen answers to prayers. Mm. I've seen situations turned around. I've seen circumstances change. And the only way that I can be patient is by remaining steadfast in my faith, by relying on God and believing what his word says, that he works everything together for good mm. for those who are called according to his purposes. So I have to remain steadfast. I have to rely on God to do that. 
um, because I can't do it in my own strength. And we show grace to, to our kids all the time from the minute they're born. Mm. You put their needs ahead of yours. When they're little and they're naughty sometimes, you show grace to them. You love them be because you love them. Mm. When they're older and they're teenagers, sometimes they say things that hurt you or they do things that disappoint you, but you show them grace because you love them. And, you know, I can't do all of that in my own strength. Mm. I need God to help me. And the only way I can do that is by relying on him, by believing his word and by spending time with him. Mm. Beautiful. Because how old are your kids? Uh, my eldest is 37. Um, he's married now with a little baby. And then Emma, who's here today, has got... Um, she's 35 this year. She's got three little boys. And then Matthew is 33. Wonderful. And he's in Melbourne, yeah. Yeah. And so that, that grace and patience and being steadfast, that you've constantly still got to work on that even though they're 33 plus. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> it doesn't stop. It's a life <laughs> journey, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is definitely a life journey, yeah. It does not stop when they grow up and leave home. Yeah. Um, you just, yeah. It's constant. Mm. I've been thinking this morning when we are at um, morning tea, I was thinking about Audrey and Audrey's about to turn 90. Is that right? You're about, wow. And those same qualities that I see in you, Jenny, I also see in you, Audrey, 90 years of being such a steadfast, gracious, patient mum. Um, and I was looking at as, as well this morning, we've got Kate's mum here, Susan, and she's, just, she's 91 and I think that's, that's incredible, right, that we have these beautiful women around us that are holding that strength and dignity always. 91 years of that. That's, that's wow. So congratulations for starters. That's amazing. Hey, um, Elise, you, you and I have a similar journey in, this, in a few ways, apart from um, maybe having a baby at 19. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Um, cool that you met the love of your life then, though. Yeah. That's <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> Luckily. Yes. Good on your dad. Right. Um, but you had to navigate grief um, quite early on because mm -hmm. um, you lost your mum quite unexpectedly too. Yeah. And you also had a – you gained a stepmum, I should say. Mm -hmm. You gained a stepmum and I just would love to hear your thoughts in <laughs> – if you don't mind sharing, of course, um, how you navigated being a mum without a mum, being a mum with a stepmum, and then being a mum at the same time as your stepmum had kids. <laughs> That's yeah, a lot, mate. It is. Um, I think we, we got married at when I was 18 and um, I was a chilled out a teenager, <laughs> really. Uh, then we had Charlie pretty much straight away. Um, which was amazing, loved it. Um, but like I said, I was suffering postnatal depression mm. after that. Um, so a bit of a shock to the system, going from just a carefree young person to being responsible for a small human mm. and, and not coping so well. Um, my mum was a huge help um, for a few months of that because she'd also suffered the same thing. Oh, wow. So she knew what to look out for yeah. and... She was a really great support, um, like ridiculously amazing, above and beyond mm. what you could hope for. Um, but when Charlie was nine months old, she, my mum passed away suddenly. Um, no cause of death, she just died in her sleep. Wow. So it was a huge shock to us all. Um, my sister was 15. Oh, wow. I was 20. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, lots going on in life. Um, my dad moved on quite quickly after all of this had happened. So we did take care of my sister for a year. Wow. So we had an angry teenager yeah. <laughs> and a toddler yeah. <laughs> that we were caring for. Um, and then, yeah, not long after that, my dad got married and he married someone a bit younger. She's Dan's age. So they had another, they had a family. Mm. Uh, we knew we couldn't just have one child, so we finally worked towards having a second and very excited. 
I told Dad and he said, oh, we're having a baby too. Oh, <laughs> and that's where I kind of lost it because up yes. until that point, I um, yeah. was kind of caught in the middle of, yeah, my mum's side of the family not being happy that mm. he'd moved on quickly and mm. I felt I needed to support him as well and it was like the meat in the sandwich. Oh. Um, so I was okay, just mm. getting along. But once, yeah, once we were having kids together, I... <laughs> I went Whole downhill for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but that's okay. You know, you just amazingly keep going. Mm. Mm. You keep growing. You become stronger. You become more of the person God wants you to be. So true. Um, and I would say I only got through all of this with, you know, the love of God. I know he's a good father mm. and I knew that he had a good plan for my life. Yes, I was angry with him for a while. Mm. Um but once he helped me work through that, I realised uh, that it's all, it was all in his plan. Mm. We all go through hard things because we are meant to be able to help other people through their hard things. And um, Dan was another <laughs> amazing part of my life that he was so patient and loving and I was crazy and <laughs> <laughs> he loved me through all that. <laughs> you know, community, mm. friends... Mm. So many people loved me through all of that that yeah. time of my life. Yeah. Um, yes, you know, you move on. You can learn to live without crying every day. and But you never stop missing the person you love. Mm. Um, but you do have a choice. You know, how that person impacted your life, you can then use it for good in your own life. So good. Um, I could have chosen to be bitter and angry about it mm. all these years. Or I made the choice to keep living, keep growing and keep loving and trying, I guess, trying to be like my mum to other people. She was amazing. She loved wow. people so well. And that's what I'm trying to do. You're certainly living it. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, you are. Um, I remember my first Mother's Day um, without my mum, I, w I walked in, I feel like the shops are just inundated with Mother's Day stuff, right? And if you're struggling in motherhood or you're, you're infertile or you've lost a baby or you've lost a mum or Mother's Day is really hard, I literally walked down um, the aisle and I said to Matt, I think I'm gonna kick down every Mother's Day card st like stand. And he's like, do it if you want. I'm like, that's the husband I love. Like, he's like, just go for it, do it. I'm like, okay. And I pushed some, but I did. And then I felt like, oh, the good, the good Christian in me was like, oh, I should probably pick the stuff up again. <laughs> but so, I, it's kind of interesting because you're right. Mother's Day can be really tricky in the sense that you feel fine and then all of a sudden these waves of loss kind of, you have to navigate again because it's so amplified on this day. And then social media now is like, Oh my goodness, it's great, but it's also not great because everyone is like, I'm going to post just today about my mum. And then you think, oh, okay, great. Anyway, it's just surges, isn't it? But you're doing really well, really, really well. And because you're, do you want to talk about your children? How, how many have you got? What are uh, their names, yeah. <laughs> their ages? I have three. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's 15. She's at the back. <laughs> uh, Charlie's waving. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. <laughs> uh, Cruz is 12. And then I have a daughter, Elkie, who's um, nine, nearly nine. I keep so forgetting great. their ages. Yeah. And it's a fun, it's a very fun journey. Yeah. I love the stage that the kids are at now. And we have a lot of fun together. Yeah. <laughs> Lots S of laughs. Speaking of age, um, it's Elise's birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I felt, I was like, are you okay to speak on the panel even though it's your birthday? She's like, yeah, why not? I'm like, what a woman, <laughs> what a woman. Double the presents, Charlie, please. <laughs> She's good. Good. <laughs> um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Gabby, you kind of alluded to this right at the beginning about your mother potentially changing your perspective of motherhood. <laughs> And then you also said there was a, a, an eight-year gap between your two kids. Um, did that role as... Well, did your role as a daughter really impact your role as a mother the first time and second round? 
Yes, it was very different. Um, when I had my first child, Claire, um, Claire Rebecca, she was just gorgeous and beautiful. Still is, look at her. And we love her so much. <laughs> and um, But I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea. It was like something from another planet <laughs> or someone from another planet. <laughs> but thank God for the church and our friends and relationships uh, which supported us and we grew through that. Mm. And in between, yes, I did have a few miscarriages, but I just really felt that if it was meant to be, it would be. And if, you know, if it wasn't meant to be, then it wouldn't. I was very black and white like that and I knew that God was in control. And then Jacob came along, which was a real blessing and we never expected it. I thought, oh, poop, what have I done? <laughs> Because when Jacob came along, I was nearly 47. I thought I should be a grandma now. <laughs> but anyhow, that was a real bl absolute blessing. And yep. then I didn't have to work full time anymore. Um, so, yeah, more time, less pressure. Um, so I suppose life in many ways became a lot easier. But I just knew one thing that I didn't want to be like my mum. Mm. God bless her. Um, and so, of course, I had choices and I had to make decisions every day mm. that I don't want to be like my mum, I don't want to be like my, ba my dad, even though he was a good person, but not a strong person. Um, and so, really, I suppose I had to look to God, you know, the Holy Ghost, and I was constantly challenged. Mm. Who are you going to be, a victim, or are you going to be a oh God driven person yeah. and take the challenge and so um yeah over time <laughs> being a rough diamond um yeah god challenged me and helped me to change and, yeah. and decide i want life i want a family i want children i want everything that life does have to offer with its blessings yeah and you know the the potential is limitless Mm. So don't give up on yourself. Know that God's real. He is there for all of us regardless. And and he's not a res he doesn't say you this or you that, but he just says I love you. Yeah. I accept you. So great. And and that's that's what yeah. And and my husband of course. Mm. You know, um always strong, always there. Mm. You know. And so it's God's blessing on our lives. Mm. You know, he puts us in a church and they're our family. Yeah. I think that that's something to really um, just pause on is that we, well, the three of you particularly, have embodied grit and tenacity and strength and dignity. But that is also supported by your loving husbands who have equally shown grit and tenacity and strength and dignity and they haven't given up and um in closing um mm. this morning i think it's um really important to just acknowledge that what you've woven through the whole of this morning is about choice mm. Mm. i don't know if you heard that too but at mm. moment mm. throughout these moments of their life um these beautiful women have had to make a really pivotal choice mm. and i think we can whether we're mothers or not, in nurture, nature, if you're here as a male, we have to make choices. And even so did Jesus. And I'm thinking of, you know, the, um, the verse in Luke 4 where it says Je Jesus chose at daybreak to go and spend solidarity. Like he spoke, um, he, sorry, yeah, he was in solitary, I should say. He, w he spent time just mm. to pause and reflect. And that was a choice. And so I think it's really um, beautiful that you've had to make these choices that have affected not only the people sitting here this morning, mm. um, but your own families. Mm. Can you thank our wonderful panellists this morning? And we just have something really small for you. Just to say thank you. We love you so much. <laughs> um, will you just join me in praying? So would you close your eyes with me and... Um, God, I just thank you so much that you have intricately 
planned and purposefully created women that we are technicolor. We bring nurture and um, God, I thank you so much for these women on the stage with me this morning and I thank you for the women that are both watching online and in our lives and sitting here in this auditorium. God, I thank you that you have a plan and purpose for them and that throughout our days when we have moments of choice, I pray that you would be the voice that is louder than all the others in the room, that is louder than the toddlers, that is louder than the world, that you would be that voice that is our comfort, that you would be the voice that is our peace. And when things get rocky, God, I pray that we would trust in your firm foundation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Will you thank them again? Well, that's this morning's service. Um, I feel like there was some really rich knowledge this morning from our panellists and I do actually want to um, invite, if you would like prayer for anything this morning, if Mother's Day is really tricky for you or you've got a big week coming up or you're struggling with something, we would love to open up this space for prayer um, because that's what we do here at our church. Where it's part of our DNA. We love to come alongside you and pray, but if not, have a great week. And we'll see you next week.